Hello everyone, this is Carbonomics. The beauty of capitalism in the countries with relatively free markets, like the United States, is that you're the one who decides your own fate. You know, for many, especially in the younger generations, uh, that can be, you know, kind of a terrifying thought. The idea that your own decisions and beliefs will determine what your life becomes. And there are plenty of people in this world that just want to, you know, essentially waste away, learn nothing, doing nothing of notable achievement. Uh, and they're definitely afraid of taking risks. You know, these are the same people that put all their savings into a high yield interest savings account where they're lucky to get one to two percent on their money, or at least they were for a long time. You know, return that doesn't even beat inflation, uh, but especially not now that it's running out of control. Although uh, rates, as you can see here, have been going up recently though, but you get the point. The majority of the United States is suffering. You know, living paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet. For many, uh, this isn't their fault, but for many of them, you know, it is. Uh, they don't have the means or the resolve to bring themselves out of financial checkmate. They put themselves in a position where it is nearly impossible to take risks, attempting to find a new job, learn new skills, or bettering themselves. You know, they're too busy simply trying to survive. And it is truly a shame, and I wish it wasn't this way, um, but I am guessing this situation doesn't apply to you if you're watching this channel. But we have to maintain perspective and understand the opportunities that we've been given in this life, you know, no matter how small. And if you are in the position to take risks, then you should take them, in my opinion. You know, bringing this back to stocks, uh, but this does apply to all aspects of life. You know, no one has gotten rich taking the easy, common path. The common advice, you know, buy index funds for 40 years and you too will have a million dollars. Uh, when it's been devalued because the U.S. currency is being inflated away as we speak. Um, you know, even if it does exist in 40 years, which isn't a guarantee, right? You know, financial advisors can show you all the charts and statistics of the risk in owning too few stocks. You know, they can tell you how crazy you are for owning anything other than Microsoft and Apple. Uh, these are limiting beliefs for unmotivated people, quite frankly. That are not passionate about investing. And the truth is, you know, the same principles that apply to becoming rich or successful in general through any medium apply just the same to investing. The greatest way to create wealth, starting a business, is incredibly concentrated. Many of the business owners only own equity in their own business, you know, no one else's. And that's about as concentrated of a portfolio as it gets, you know, far more concentrated than most retail investors. Now, do 90% of businesses fail? Sure. Yeah, what a great stat. This might lead you to assume that most business owners and stocks you can buy are essentially destined to fail. And many of them do, but it's murky about that statistic and how many of these businesses even had a good idea to begin with. You know, how many of them even had a solid business plan? You know, how many of them even gave the idea enough time to get off the ground? You know, these are many things that are not necessarily discussed. And the fact of the matter is, you know, if you take the time to learn about business, investing, and other skills, do the proper due diligence ahead of time, then you are likely to succeed over the long time horizon. And all that work goes to waste if you buy 30, 40, 50 stocks. You know, if a stock is 1% of your portfolio, you know, even if you had a 10-bagger, then ultimately it wouldn't do much for you, unless you're already rich to begin with. You know, do you think that the most successful investors everyone talks about, you know, Warren Buffett, Peter Lynch, George Soros even, you know, do you think they're most well-known because they dollar cost averaged into some index funds? You know, obviously not. And Stanley Druckenmiller, you know, a billionaire investor who worked with George Soros was quoted here, you know, saying the greatest investors make large concentrated bets. And keep in mind, you know, you don't have to be a genius to perform like these guys. You know, if anything, we should be performing better than them because they manage so much capital. You know, opportunities are truly limited when you manage billions of dollars in investment funds, you know, which is why Buffett barely makes any deals anymore. But with that said, you know, if you want to have enough wealth to avoid having a boss waking up at a specific time in the morning, you know, not worrying about how much dinner costs, then you won't get that with a diversified portfolio. You know, just as Buffett and other great investors didn't. You know, even though they will recommend being diversified for the average person, and if you did manage to get rich being diversified, it's not going to happen quickly. 
you know, you'll have more than enough money to afford surgeries as you grow old. You know, that you will have, but not much else. You know, taking risks early on in your life is the best way to set up for the rest of your future. To enjoy the wealth you obtain before you grow too old to utilize it. You know, if you're already in your 40s, 50s, and beyond, you know, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to become wealthy either. You know, this is just to say that the younger you are, you know, the easier it is to build a foundation for the future. You know, when you can take the most risk and you have the least to lose. If you take concentrated bets on two, three stocks, you know, maybe a few more, if you're in your 20s or 30s, even if you lost all your money, uh, which is unlikely for all of them to fail, you know, as long as you do your proper due diligence, but even if you lost everything, you know, you have time to make that money back. And if some of those early investments pay off for you, or if you start a business or any endeavor that can lead to early success, you know, then you're well on your way to true financial independence far earlier than most people can achieve it. And, you know, financial independence is a place that you'll simply never reach without taking on calculated risk. But yeah, that is the end of the video here. If you liked it, please remember to like, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Uh, hit that notification bell to not miss my future videos as well. And thanks for watching.